Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that your inspiration that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading comes from Hosea. The Lord said, I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will rise us up, and we will live before him. Let us know, let us, let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with him, O Ephraim? What shall I do, O Judea, Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please, let's join together reading Psalm 50 found in your insert. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O, o Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you of because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I will take no bull calf from your stalls, nor he goat from your pens. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, the herds and their thousands upon the hills. I know every bird in the sky, and the creatures of the fields are in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall honor me. Our second reading is from the book of Romans. 
The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus saw a man called Matthew sitting at a tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, my daughter has just died. Come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his coat. For she said to herself, If I only touch his coat, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away. For the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
In today's gospel reading from Matthew, we are witnesses to Jesus' teaching being revealed in his words and actions, his response to the four encounters with people as he walks in Capernaum. Having called four fishermen, Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John, to follow him, Jesus calls Matthew a tax collector who is, seen, who is sitting in his booth. Jesus' invitation to him is, follow me. Like the fishermen, Matthew leaves everything behind, his livelihood, all that he has known and done, to go with Jesus to live as a disciple. Matthew enters a house with Jesus and the other disciples where they sit to eat. It is the Pharisees who point out the company with whom Jesus is spending his time. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? The Pharisees saw themselves above, more righteous than these tax collectors and sinners who were enjoying a meal and fellowship with Jesus. Tax collectors were not looked upon with favor or respect. As a group of people, tax collectors, tax collectors were despised because they were viewed as collaborating with occupational forces of the imperial Rome. There was also the belief, a very strong belief, that they collected more tax than was required. They were not in good stead with any of the people, let alone the Pharisees. Sinners, according to the Pharisees, were seen as individuals who do not, who did not live a righteous life before God. They would not perform the necessary acts prescribed by Jewish law and tradition, as the Pharisees did. Why would Jesus associate himself with these people? He is making a mistake. Eating with them, he himself is sinning against God. Jesus' response reveals why he was sent by God. As prophet, as Messiah, Jesus came into the world to call the sinner, not the righteous, to call those who are in need of redemption, those who have turned away from God. Jesus did not come to separate himself from people who sinned, but to show the love and mercy of the Father in heaven, to reveal who and what was within him to all in need of forgiveness, wholeness, holiness, to begin to show his disciples the relationship he has with the Father who sent him. The third and fourth encounters reveal Jesus' compassion and the power of his healing. While Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, pleading that his daughter had died and if Jesus would just come and lay his hand on her, she would live. This helpless, frightened, yet faithful leader of the synagogue comes to Jesus, believing Jesus will bring her back to life with his touch. 
On the way to the leader's home, a woman who was considered an outcast, an unclean person having suffered from bleeding for 12 years, comes up to Jesus and with great boldness and faith touches the fringe of his cloak without hesitancy. If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. These three words spoke to me. They kind of kept coming in and out of my mind. If I only. If I only. It's not regret or doubt, but hope, anticipation, expectation, empowerment, faith, boldness, if I only. Even though the words were spoken once by the woman, I could imagine the others who encountered Jesus to speak them also. If I only, I will know Jesus. I will find life for my daughter. I will be made well. If I only, God will do the rest. If I only follow him, Jesus will lead the way. If I only ask on behalf of my daughter, Jesus will lay his hand on her and restore her to life. If I only touch the fringe of his cloak, I will be made well. If I only bring him to my home, Jesus will raise my daughter. Hope. Hope because of and in response to the presence of Jesus in a person's life. Whether we are talking about when Jesus was walking the earth, when Jesus was forming the community of faith, when Jesus was showing the people the power of the kingdom of God, but also with us today. This is another meditation, another good meditation from Bishop Stephen Charleston. Hope does not fall from the sky. It is a feeling made as often as found. We generate hope. We create it and share it and sustain it with our determination. With every breath we take in life, we have another moment to express our hope in what is to come. Our hope is not a wish, but a commitment. To say we have given up hope means that we have given up our willingness to keep producing it. God keeps us from such resignation. God gives us the spirit to always be the source of hope, a life of hope for all to see and share. May we be influenced by Jesus' encounters today, the people who, who hoped for something beyond their understanding, their imagination, but yet they believed the concrete of what Jesus was able to do. And may we in our lives, when we are struggling, when we are questioning, that we know our faith is strong, that we can say, if I 
only. And then step aside and allow God to do the rest through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the teaching of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Nicene Creed, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form four, found on page 388 of your prayer book. Let us pray for our church, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jeff, our bishop, Mary, our priest, Jessica and Bob, our wardens, Connie, Deanna, Robin, Sharon, and Pat, our vestry and clerk. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, the Anglican Church of Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia, let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In our community, all the Burlington area churches, Love Inc., the Transitional Living Center, the Women's Resource Center, the Diocesan Hospitality Center. For those suffering from war, natural disasters, or the economic crisis in our world, give us all reverence for the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in the armed forces, and especially those deployed, Mikey Reina Menez. In our Paris cycle of prayer, Thomas and Susan Hollingstead, Paul Haynes, and family. For those celebrating birthdays, Chad Heiligenthal. For those celebrating an anniversary, Mark and Robin Marzal, Tom and Sue Hollingstead, Chad and Tricia Heiligenthal. Bless who, all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are in need, Joanne, Erebus, and Anastasia, Deacon Georgia Agner, Margie Bealey, Jane Clothier, 
Sue Hollingstead, Connie Herrick, Wayne Herrick, Cindy Lawrence, Mary Nichols, Jerry Ramsey, Sharon Twist, David Toretta, Jimmy Annie. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.